Ladies and gentlemen, it is true. I have survived the attack of the Russian PSYOPs. They have done the imaginable. They went to my local store and they normally dig to the shit and they, they, you can see it's really poison. You can still see the poison and they poisoned my goddamn drink. Guys, I haven't been working off a lot. No, I've gotten sick. I've gotten sick on Sunday. Uh, we talk a bit about the aftermath of the Wagner coup, how, where Russia is standing right now. As I said, I want to make Tommy K News more a thing nowadays because nobody wants to f***ing see video games anymore. Welcome back to Tommy K News, where I'm very unbiased, f*** Russia, and I totally don't steal all the content from others. Welcome back. First, a little recap. What happened? A scenario group staged what looked like the beginnings of a military coup in Russia. If you're talking about New York, it's just a f***ing... Military command blatant headquarters in trash Rostov, group, man. and then began moving north along Russia's M4 highway towards Moscow. You know all this. By Saturday Tommy K was like live covering. Track to reach Moscow by Sunday morning. All of a sudden, thank you guys. Where's the four K subs? Wake up. Prigozhin suddenly turned around, saying that a deal had been done to avoid further blood. Tommy K's opinion, as I have researched this whole incident a bit, you know what I think I, what I think happened? There's proof showing Tommy K News live and the sources here in my Twitter DMs. Russia was threatening the family members of the top Wagner people. They were texting the Wagner people, listen, we know where your family is, this is the addresses, we're gonna f***ing cut their heads off. Because that's what we like to do, according to some videos. That's something I've heard. That's something I heard here on uh, Infowars. Ah, Tommy K News. So in this video, we're going <clears> to <throat> take a look at Wagner's attempted coup. Why Prigozhin turned around. And why, even if he survived this weekend, this is probably the beginning of the end for Putin. Is it though? Is it though? They're being very quiet right now, right? We're going to be being very quiet. Video. So what caused all of this chaos to start? Well, the immediate cause seems to be the Kremlin's attempt to fold the Wagner Group into the regular Russian army by July 1st. Essentially, following growing tensions between the private military company and the Russians... Little, little Tommy K News interception here. Bro, if I had my own military group, I would make a better symbol than that. Hey man, let's make our own mercenary group. That sounds sick, man. Should we have a shark or like a bear or something sick? How about a star with two swords? Wow, that's crazy, man. What colors do you think? Black, gold, red. Oh, that's crazy, bro. When I was a 12-year-old kid playing Call of Duty, I would make symbols like this. State, Just saying. Putin wanted to limit the Maybe he was involved of the school mercenaries. Also. And most notably, their leader, Prigozhin, <clears throat> by bringing them into the regular Russian army. Now, obviously, this didn't go down well with Prigozhin, who responded to the Literally every CK banner you ever made. Stop, 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 stop. Steagle, you have five minutes to apologize or you're banned. No. He's not wrong. Wolf poops. Oh. ...is subordinate to the interests of the Russian Federation. <sighs> Wagner troops wouldn't be signing a contract with the Russian MOD because Russia's defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, cannot manage military formations. This isn't a new criticism either. For months now, Prigozhin has been criticizing the Russian military's tactics. And while he did avoid criticizing Putin directly, he still definitely went after the Russian army. Anyway, this statement was followed by a... What I like about this whole thing is how 12 Russian pilots died, or 11, and the Russian public is like, Ruski, Ruski, yeah, yeah, everything is perfect, man. Dude, imagine you're these 12 f***ing pilots, man. You're just like looking from heaven, uh, probably from hell. You're like, wow, guys, thank you. Thank you so much. That sacrifice was really worth it. Weird stunt where Prigozhin visited the Ministry of Defense in Moscow to hand in his notice. And then there was the relatively calm for notice? a couple of weeks. With what Prigozhin this, just apple? repeating his usual talking points about the Russian army there you being go, Stigo. useless Thank you. and less effective than Wagner. That was Banco, until shut your mouth. Friday night, though, when Prigozhin accused the Russian Ministry of Defense of bombing a Wagner camp. In response, Prigozhin... They a whole, bro. Furious audio recording on his dirt. Telegram channel, warning that him and 25,000 Wagner troops were going to stage a coup. Then, late on Friday evening and in the early hours of Saturday morning, Wagner troops actually crossed back into Russia and entered the Russian city of Rostov, an incredibly important city for the coordination of the war in Ukraine. From there, they directly <coughs> seized control by occupying Russia's Southern Military Command headquarters. Prigozhin then released two videos from Rostov on his Telegram channel. Where are they going? In the first what are they one, doing? He's talking to Russia's Deputy Defense Minister, who looks pretty Again, terrified. Again, I swear to God, I said this before. 
if I right now go to my local park marketplace, this is how all the drunk people sit on their benches, man. And claims that he's trying to save Russia. Video louder, second, you make it louder on your end. The military command Come on, is step up still functioning. And that Wagner have found documents confirming that the Russian army has lost three to four times as many men as I don't they know that claimed. is true, though. Prigozhin then know. demanded talks with Garazimov. I truly wonder what the real death count is. I really, really wonder, man. Shoigu, warning that, quote, until they're here, we'll stay. Block off Rostov and head to Moscow. In response to all of this, Putin gave an emergency speech on Russian state television, where he accused Prigozhin of treason. Wagner responded to this by saying... And how do you handle treason in Russia? You give them a nice trip to Belarus and working benefits. Saying that Putin had made, quote, the wrong decision and that Russia would have a new president soon. Not long after, still on Saturday morning, Wagner troops moved north along the M4 highway from Rostov to Moscow, nice entering the nice Voronezh Oblast, which Uncle, lies you're just super 500 bad, you kilometers idiot. south of Moscow. Now, <clears> it's <throat> not entirely clear what happened from here, but from the open source intelligence available, it looks like a couple of Russian aviation assets were sent to push Wagner back. I also didn't get that. So there's a f***ing mutiny happening, right? Like, five million cars are driving to your capital, man. You're gonna get f***ed over. And all they do is, Ah, you spasila reskirsuka. Can we send one, uh, you know what, two helicopters? We send two helicopters, okay? Hey, how about we send everything? No, no, two helicopters. But in the end, Wagner shot down at least one Russian helicopter. Now, this lack Dude, of that, real resistance... That, that pilot who died there is the most useless death things. ever, man. Firstly, it could be that because Wagner... They didn't have anything to send... Yeah, I would think so, too. Any airstrikes would have to come from planes flying real... This is, once again, very strong in the Hoi 4 meta, right? You don't do air nowadays. You just do anti-air vehicles. Wagner is playing meta, as to be honest. I just heard a weird sound. Sorry. Which would the reduce their man. accuracy and risk hitting civilians on the motorway which has apparently already happened. Yeah, I saw a video of a civilian truck uh, exploding two civilians' knives. But hey, who cares, right? ...to fight Wagner for obvious reasons. Let's give them all amnesty. And interestingly, the only group which really seems interested in opposing Wagner is Ramzan Kadjov's Chechen, who entered Rostov on Saturday afternoon, with security services trying everything to prevent Wagner's advance along the highway, including blocking the road with dumpsters full of sand and literally digging up the road. But Wagner either bulldozed through or just took an alternative route. Yeah, just in the end, in anticipation past. of Wagner's arrival, police in Moscow even built machine gun barricades. And air traffic data suggests that Putin fled Moscow for St. Petersburg, predicting their arrival. Good old Putin, man. At least Hitler killed himself in his bunker, Putin, man. God damn it. Maybe it's Argentina. We don't know. The Jerome guy, he said he's in Argentina. However, I don't know. at about 3 p.m. on Saturday, with Wagner troops less than 250 kilometers south of Moscow, Prigozhin suddenly announced via an audio message on Telegram that they would be... Imagine that, right? Zelensky stays in Kiev, facing certain death, and Putin, at the first sign, runs out of Moscow, and all these Russians are still... Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! <sighs> The baluga, Turning suka, round yeah. They went to mid quote, too much. Avoid blood being spilled. It's worth mentioning here that when he means Prigozhin blood. says blood, he's talking specifically about Wagner blood. Because while no Wagner troops have been killed, reports suggest that at least some Russian troops were killed during this exercise. Regardless, according to the Belarusian Foreign Ministry, a deal was negotiated by Belarusian President Alexander... Also, w why? What the f*** does Lukashenko have to do with anything? Is there no one in Russia that could have said what he was saying to Wagner? Could no one have f***ing... Hey, man, how about we stop this? It's kind of stupid, you know? But they need Luka for the... F*** off. Better call Luka? Lukashenko, what is happening? A man who's not only friends with Putin, but has also known Prigozhin for over 20 years. Lukashenko top the in the world. Disclosed by the Kremlin you mentioned this as a role-playing game, man. Later. Firstly, Prigozhin and those Wagner troops that took part in the mutiny will receive legal immunity, and Prigozhin will go to Belarus as a sort of friendly exile for a bit. 
Secondly, the Wagner troops who didn't take part, we... Germany is now placing 4,000 soldiers in Lithuania, and NATO is getting more active on the eastern flank. If actually Wagner wants to try some retarded f***ing shit from the Belarusian border... Bro, that's where I think NATO is gonna wake up a bit. If they try anything from the Belarusian border, man, that's when you gotta... That's when you gotta go, okay, boys. There was some suggestion that Shoigu and even possibly Gerasimov could be removed from their post... Which didn't happen Wagner yet. wanted. This hasn't yet been confirmed. I really wonder what's happening behind the scenes here, man. What is going on? That is Vladimir Putin checking out here. Something is weird. But do not worry, guys. Tommy K News will be here on the spot. Why, smell, man. What the f***? Now, admittedly, there are still more questions <clears throat> than answers here. But whatever happens next, it looks like this could be the beginning of the end for Putin. Wagner's mutiny Let's was see, a man. complete humiliation for him. And it's clear that his authority in Russia has been fatally undermined. Rostov citizens even cheered when Wagner forces were leaving in a and bus. jeered as the police returned. And to make matters worse, all of this will do terrible things to the Russian army's morale. And it's hard to see how Wagner could really be folded into the regular Putin's Russian army. Putin's waiting for the latest news of Tommy Kinn news so he can after make his all, move after They them. literally shot down Russian Air Force jets and they got away with it. And not only that, how can you get away with that? There's no fucking way, man. That Wagner thinks that they're better than the regular Russian troops. In a sense, though, this is Putin reaping Pick what Billy. he sowed. Pick one year. If you give a lunatic criminal chef his own private army, which you rely on disproportionately, well, you're asking for trouble. No so fucking sh Vladimir Putinovich, man. That's what happened. But how will the Wagner uh, mutiny affect Ukraine on the battlefield? We're going to check that out real quick. Unfortunately, I wasn't go uh, on for four days. Normally, I'm the news, not this guy. But right now, we have to keep up. I, I don't feel yet how this stops Putin, man. One thing I always thought Russia did very well, and Vladimir Putin did very well, is he enrooted his character so deep. Imagine Hitler would have been active in Germany for 30 years. Imagine how deep Germans would have been loyal to Adolf Hitler, right? And that's kind of what happened to Russia, man. He was there like in 2000, right? So this is like 23 years now, I think. Something like that. Vladimir Putin is very fucking ingrained, man. And it's very hard to, to dethrone him in Russia. One, we're going to be taking a look at what this whole episode means for Ukraine specifically. And um, we're going to break it down into three parts. Firstly, we're going to talk about what the deal actually means for Wagner troops and the Russian army. Secondly, Thank we're going to talk about how the end of the Wagner group... Literal mafia nation, it's a terrorist Russian. nation. Have you seen the video today? Today there was rocket uh, attacks on a coffee in Ukraine that killed three children. Yeah. Mashallah, man. They are a terrorist state. That's what Russia is. Tommy K News unbiased, unhinged. Only telling the truth. And Russia is a terrorist state. ...an army tactically. That is to say how it might affect their defensive and offensive capabilities on the battlefield in the Kramatorsk short to medium exactly. And then thirdly, we're going to talk about how it might affect Russia's strategic thinking. In effect, how it might impact the Kremlin's objectives and their long-term thinking. Let's start at the beginning. How <clears> the <throat> end of Wagner will impact the Russian army. According to Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov, this guy, Pushkin's man. deal with Lukashenko basically splits the... Lukashenko's the only guy that's kind of looked like he eats a lot, right? And he's like the only one with a sense. Wagner group they into need to eat two more. parts. The troops that didn't take part in the mutiny and those that did. According to Peskov, those troops that didn't take part are set to be folded into the regular Russian army, as the Russian Ministry of Defense That's gonna originally suck for them. to do. Don't they make less money now? It's like you're a Twitch streamer and suddenly kick us like, you have to come to us now. Well, I'll get 95%, but you also get crippling gambling addiction. The mutiny will get legal but at least impunity. you can steal. But there's no suggestion that these people now. will be folded into the regular Russian army. Now, given the Pritchard claim that he was supported by 25,000 men during the mutiny, which would account for the vast majority of Wagner troops, that leaves only a few troops left to be folded into the regular Russian army. And the vast majority of those given legal immunity will probably either follow Prishkovin into Belarus or be redeployed abroad. For those of you who don't know, Wagner has a significant presence in Africa and the Middle East, and are currently involved in the ongoing civil war in Sudan. Therefore, most Wagner troops who aren't folded into the Russian army will probably look for redeployment. They don't even have red dot sites, Because these man. roles are significantly... Every time I see Ukrainians, man, they have these 
fucking Call of Duty weapons, man. The Russians only have basic AKs with no, uh, with no add-ons. To pay them working. They don't have 25 kill wall street, wall street. In practice, then this means that the Russian army will only get a handful of new troops from Wagner who didn't support Prishkovin's coup. I think for us, the West is good if Shoigu stays because he has done so many mistakes, right? Once again, Sun Tzu, if your enemy is doing a mistake, do not interrupt him. Which Very leaves important. the vast majority of Wagner troops withdrawing from both Russia and Ukraine. Which brings us on to the second part of this video. How will Wagner's effective dissolution <coughs> affect Russia tactically? And the bad news for Ukraine is that Wagner's dissolution is unlikely to have much of an impact in the immediate term. That's because most of Wagner's troops were previously focused in the east, in and around Bakhmut. And these forces were replaced by the regular Russian army at the end of May and early June. Similarly, reports suggest that there's no... That's like you're playing Dota against a Korean guy, but then he has to leave and some f***ing German comes in, man. You're gonna have a much easier time now. Wagner presence in the south around Kherson, where the heaviest fighting has been taking place this month. Largely because Wagner were designed for offensive rather than defensive I operations. heard they stepped over the river. We're gonna look so into that in a second. the affair might have had a detrimental impact on the Russian army's morale. I deployed Poland next week. Where from? in the Air Force, given that something like seven helicopters were downed. If Russia loses this, they will blame his generals. Did you guys see what happened? They blamed the West. It was the CIA. It was the West. It was the West. And then these Russians sit at home with their vodka and they believe that. During Wagner's march on Moscow, all in all, it's unlikely to make a significant difference from the to USA, I'm going to Poland? Why? Prospects You're getting ready to, you know, in the immediate term. free the world again? However, in the medium term, things will start to look a little more promising for Ukraine. I think CIA didn't even have to do anything there, man. These Russians are f***ing themselves the up. You don't need no CIA. Bar, there's some provisional evidence to suggest <clears throat> that despite claiming to have hundreds of thousands of troops... There was actually Republicans blaming the Biden administration for the Wagner coup on Twitter in reserve thanks to putin's partial mobilization last year the russian army is actually running low on both troops and weapons and this would explain why the kremlin is trying so hard to force the various not that crazy america blamed everything on russia during the election, which has been proven if you look at the proof there has been I mean, putin and progression even said it openly admittedly admitting that they were influencing the 2016 election with internet troll farms which is quite obvious that they did that in terms to get trump elected because they knew that if trump gets elected it will destabilize their enemy uh the usa private <clears throat> military companies to fold into the regular russian army they should build Even more mills too much it's always going to provoke resistance from prigozhin Similarly, the fact that Russia is apparently that guy's a face not even a mom can love tanks man. and missiles from Myanmar and has Myanmar, make... Myanmar, sending you equipment. If you play Hoi Four and Myanmar volunteers save your Russia, man, you should probably put G in the G in the chat. Deliveries to India suggest that Russia is running low on material. In the medium term, the dissolution of Wagner will put more better weapons. strain better. on Russia's manpower reserves, especially because Putin clearly isn't keen on another wave of mobilization. All in all, while Wagner's dissolution doesn't mean that we should expect... Dude, once they f***ing uh, um, get our soldiers from St. Petersburg and Moscow, that's when the society starts thinking, man, right? The most of uh, the middle and upper class lives in St. Petersburg and Moscow, and they're like, ha ha, I have nothing to do with this war. F*** the West, man. We all hate the West, even though we like their jackets, and we all have Western phones, man, but f*** the West, bro. These f***ers, man. That's the people that need to see war. They're going to be quiet in a second, in man. Counteroffensive it could erode Russia's military capacity in the medium term. So, on to the third part of this video. How Wagner's effective dissolution will affect Russia strategically. And, to be honest... If I was Russia here, Tommy K, the greatest general of all time, 6K, I was no forest, they have to play utterly defensive. Entrenchment, entrenchment, entrenchment. Keep the green air up, man. Get cast support and don't do a thing until something miracle happens man which probably won't happen this is where things get really bad for the kremlin King. wagner's dissolution means that the kremlin desperately needs to change strategy either by escalating or by suing for peace and this is for three reasons no but peace i think Zelensky even said that no peace you give everything back in including crimea man then we can maybe see, have peace but Putin will never do that. Putin showed for the first time his pussiness. The moment he left uh, Moscow for St. Petersburg, he showed deep inside he's just... Which every dictator, every evil guy, every bully on your school ground is just a very, very sad, depressed person deep inside, man. Coming more unsustainable. 
While the majority of Russians apparently support the so-called special military <clears throat> operation, they're clearly not happy with the way it's being prosecuted, which is why... Bro, imagine, just imagine for one second, America had some miracle thing that will turn off nukes. Russia be done in a second, right? At this point, if little Wagner can drive through and they only get attacked by two helicopters and a bunch of f***ing Ivans ding up the road, imagine NATO will go in. Holy shit, you're gone in a second, bro. And why, conversely, Russia's returning security forces were met with angry jeers. Also, Russians are less likely to support the war now that the war has come to Russia, both in Belgorod, where pro-Ukrainian groups are staging regular... But once again, it only affects these rural people, it doesn't affect the big people in Moscow and St. Petersburg. Persians, and now in central Russia via the Wagner mutiny. Yo, chat, I'm gonna say something weird, but isn't it good to be on the right side? <laughs> isn't it good that when Frodo drops the ring in the motor, you're one of these Rohan motherfuckers who's like, Oh god, good thing I didn't join Zaruman, bro. What the f It feels the good, right? It feels good. Affecting ordinary <laughs> Russians. Cringe? Your name is cringe. It, Best shit there. Serious political pressure on Putin to end the special military operations somehow. Secondly, the dissolution of the Wagner Group means that Russia is unlikely to gain any territory in the future. And that's because the regular Russian army has proven totally incapable of making significant territorial gains. Which is why they had to get Wagner to do it. That's the thing though, without Wagner, Bakhmut. they're going to be massively in trouble. The point we're making here is that even if Russia's defensive capability isn't all that much affected by Wagner's dissolution, if you don't have any offensive capacity, you can only really go backwards. You could argue though, I would think that a stalemate is bad for Ukraine. Russia can say, hey, we have Crimea, we have Luhansk, Donetsk. Fuck off Ukraine. And it would be very, very bad if then there's a peace a white peace and russia can rebuild itself right unfortunately i think ukraine has to stay active which again <clears throat> puts more pressure on putin to escalate or sue for peace before he loses more territory thirdly a mutiny will make russia even less likely to receive international support after all no country is going to stick their neck out to support a regime that could be Putin is so small. any moment they never similarly never see that, putin though. might have been hoping that one of their allies like china or belarus might come and bail him out by providing some sort of decisive military support. But these countries are now significantly- How do you want this war to end, Tommy K? The utter destruction of Russia. All territories, including Crimea, are given back to Ukraine. Ukraine joins NATO, maybe even the EU, and gets funded with EU taxpayer money. They put someone into the Kremlin that is weak, maybe even democratic, which will never happen, and yeah. Yeah, Putin needs to die and everything has to re be returned to Ukraine. He less likely support him. Like, I don't understand these arguments. How do you want World War II to end? You want to make a peace deal with Hitler? Hey, Hitler, man, okay? You can, like, keep Elsa's Lorraine, man. The concentration camps are fine, you know? Just keep them, bro, right? What is the end game here? This guy is pure evil. He's Zauron. He is Adolf Hitler reborn. You gotta f***ing go Vincent Churchill and shit. No appeasement. No talk. Because A, it looks like he could be toppled at any moment. And B, you can't compare Hitler and Putin. That's dumb. Yeah, because once again, Hitler at least stayed in his capital when it was attacked, right? Because he looks <coughs> that's a different competent. These three reasons combined all put pressure on Putin to change strategy, either by escalating or by suing for peace. And given that Putin's only real options for escalation are either another wave of mobilization or a tactical nuke, neither of which are great options from the Kremlin's perspective. I, I heard the news. I, I, I would like Kevin, someone sent me a tweet. I want to show some tweets here on the stream that uh, apparently, according to Russian sources, they have approved and finished the plan of, in case of total failure, to destroy the nuclear power plant that's uh, around Kherson or something. It means that peace is much more likely than it was a week ago. So, and here the final one. Uh, is this the beginning of the end of Putin? And then we have some tweets to look at. Wagner's attempted mutiny last weekend was not a good look for Putin. Not only was he nearly toppled by a lunatic chef with a few thousand convicts. I, I like how he's not staying neutral here and he just said it as this a lunatic chef who's full of convicts. There was also a little bit of a, a problem here with uh, Westerners that were cheering for Wagner, right? I mean, this guy taking over Russia will not be very good. Wouldn't be very good. Before we get into how all of this affects Putin's authority, let's start with what it tells us about his support. 
Most serious Russia watchers admit that even if he does manipulate the polls. What, what the? What, what is this, bro? Is this XQC's Twitch setup? What the fuck are we looking at? Putin is genuinely popular in Russia. The Levada Center, for example, which is widely considered to be the most credible and possibly the only credible polling organization in Russia, puts Putin's personal approval rating at a five-year high of 82%. Where, where do we live, guys? Like, what are we doing? ...with just 14% of Russians <sighs> disapproving. Now, even if we take these numbers with a pinch of salt, it's pretty safe to say that at least a majority of Russians approve of Putin's leadership. And for most of his premiership, the data suggests that Russians have genuinely supported Putin. Now, in a sense, this is unsurprising. He came to power riding a wave of rising oil prices, which allowed him to fund Russia's reconstruction after the economic crisis of the 90s and paint himself as a competent <coughs> technocrat. Even, <laughs> even though he was mainly just lucky to be in charge when oil prices were going up. See, he wasn't a real technocrat, the guys. The Soviet Union, Come on, it's Mikhail not Joe Gorbachev, Uber. was unlucky to be in charge while oil prices were going down. It also helps that Putin has a near complete control over the media and a habit of jailing his political <coughs> oh, opponents. Mm. However, Wagner's attempted coup and specifically the reaction to it by Russian citizens in Rostov is interesting because it suggests that while Putin might have widespread support in Russia, his support is nonetheless thin. <laughs> While most Russians think that he's doing an all right job, they apparently don't actually like him that much. This is why Wagner were allowed to casually roll into a city with a population of over a million. I mean, if a, if a bunch of armed fuckers are taking over my street, I'm gonna be like, hi, want a banana? Don't shoot me. Russians with basically no resistance. Russians think Putin is fine, but they don't like him. At least all these fucks on the home right now playing Counter Strike, man. Must have been a good day for the servers. Enough to fight for him. A good comparison is the attempted coup in Turkey in 2016, when the army tried to overthrow Erdogan, thousands, if not tens of thousands of citizens, took to the street to resist them. Now, obviously, these Turks weren't just out there to defend Erdogan, they were also defending Turkish democracy, and Turkey does have a history of political participation very unlike Russia. But nonetheless, the difference in reaction is... <laughs> if, if Turkey does better than you democratically, you know you have a problem. Not only did citizens in Rostov not really put up any resistance, but videos from Saturday evening suggest that they were actually cheering Wagner and jeering at Russia's state security forces. Again, it's only a single data point, but it does suggest that ordinary Russians, even if they think Putin is doing an all right job, just aren't enthused by him. And in a sense, this is sort of unsurprising. <coughs> Putin came to power as a competent technocrat, and technocrats rarely command much enthusiasm. He's also struggled to explain to the Russian public why they should care about Ukraine. He's constantly downplaying the importance of the invasion by referring to it as a special military operation. And he's given a million different reasons for why Russia is even in Ukraine. To regain Novo Russia, to protect Russian speakers in Donbass, to resist NATO expansion, to end American unipolarity, to denazify Kyiv, to fight back against Ukrainian Satanists, and to top it all off, he's even claimed that- And, and they believe that they be I mean, one thing I always, where I, I, I tip my head to Putin, his propaganda campaigns for these last 20 years were unbelievably well. Putin knew how to do propaganda, man. He even managed to like fund the AFD in Germany, right? And 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 made right-wing populism grow in, in Europe again, man. It's You did a very good job there, man. Russia is in Ukraine to protect traditional Russian culture. We have to protect our culture. We need to kill children, bring them to re-education camps, 
kill innocent people when they play on playgrounds. We have to behead our enemies. We have to take down civilians. We have to use a gas that is forbidden in Geneva Convention. And when everything goes wrong, we can try tactical nuke. This is our culture, brothers. This is our culture. From being Rajb. raised by LGBTQ plus rights. <laughs> and Protecting culture equals killing other slavs. <laughs> now, all of this rhetoric does make it difficult for ordinary Russians the to Geneva get behind suggestion. either Putin <laughs> or the special uh. military operation. <laughs> they ultimately don't know how serious it actually is or what it's really even about. And this isn't even just us hypothesizing, by the way. The Kremlin's confusing PR over Ukraine is something that Russian nationalists have been furious about for months. To make matters worse for Putin, last weekend's events are only going to undermine him further for three main reasons. Firstly, and most obviously, the whole of... Something that I felt about this whole thing, about Vladimir Putin, is that we reached a new zeitgeist. We reached something new in this world. In my opinion, this is just my humble opinion. We reached a level now on this planet where the media is so strong and the media has so much power over the average citizen where you can build the picture of someone so hard that nothing can shake your beliefs anymore. Donald Trump has a lot of things against him lately, right? There's a lot of things... For example, he lost a court case against a woman, right, because of sexual stuff. He's now getting indicted for Stormy Daniels. There's a lot of fucking real proof that Donald Trump is a bit of a fuck guy. But still, people don't care. They will vote for him, right? You can go to a German AFD voter and be like, listen, this is why the AFD is pretty bad. They will not give a shit. They won't even listen to you. You can tell the people, dude, Putin is, what he's doing is really fucking bad for your country. You guys are all laughing stock. They don't care. We reached this level. Maybe in the past we had that too, but where some people are just undoubtedly fully gone, man. People only react to anything. All the input that now comes into their brain is just an emotional reaction now. Everybody just has emotional reactions. I feel like, nah, I feel like Trump is still good, you know? I feel like Putin got this, you know? No one thinks anymore. And that's very good for autocracies, for Putin, for someone like Trump, that when people don't think anymore, they're very easily manipulatable. Really Luckily, weak. Tommy K. Viewers still are very, very intelligent by people. A criminal chef with a few <coughs> thousand convicts, but he also had to be bailed out by his mate Lukashenko. This video is a bit bad. He just remade his other video. This is just a remake of the video Wagner from before. It's and been Prigozhin weak. walk away scot free, despite the fact that not only did they threaten to overthrow the Kremlin, but they actually shot down a number of Russian aircraft. This might be why, <coughs> the afternoon, Russian state media is now saying that Prigozhin will indeed be charged with armed insurrection, with a maximum sentence of 20 years. Putin might have realized that letting Prigozhin go... I would give so much to see what's happening behind the scenes in Russia right now. What's going on uh, there? It'll be interesting to see how Prigozhin responds if the Kremlin really do try to arrest him. The second thing, though, is that this episode will change how the Russians perceive the war. One of the reasons that Russians have generally been pro-war is that, until recently, they were basically entirely insulated from its effects. It's easy to well support said. a war when you only hear about it on the TV, where state media tells you that your country is doing a great job against drug addict Nazi Satanists. <laughs> but the march on Moscow... Zelensky, he's a great brother, he's a great... Zelensky called on parliamentarians to legalize medical cannabis. We must finally, honestly, legalize Kenna. They give a shit about that in Ukraine? So they're actually drug addicts. Putin was right the whole time. What are you still doing here, mate? Jeez. Well, if you want to see more, click these videos. Have fun. Looking good, boy.